Bye. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Porky here. You already know that, don't you? You know. Right. I'm joined by Graham Morris, ex-boxing border control official from the Midlands. How are you doing, Graham? You all right? Yeah, good. Good. Thanks, Russ. Are you, mate? I'm okay. Right. Uh, I think we've got some news on Terry O'Connor's meeting with Robert Smith at the board of control. Have you, have you got uh, anything, the, the thing there? Yeah, I've got, I've, I've got the letter on, on O'Connor from, uh, from Robert Smith in front of me here. Well, yeah, it it's, a, it's on their note paper. Terry O'Connor, British Boxing Board of Control Judge Mr. Terry O'Connor appeared before the stewards of the board um, on the 17th of October. Um, blah blah. It says allegations made on social media. Um, I'm just reading it off here, Russ. Sorry, bear with me. Allegations made on social media, uh, O'Connor's about O'Connor having a mobile phone, following extensive considerations and footage, and Mr. O'Connor's evidence supplied. The board, the stewards are satisfied that Mr. O'Connor was not in possession of a mobile, of a telephone or handheld device whilst carrying out his duties as a judge in the contest between Lewis Richardson and Miguel Vasquez and his scoring of that bout was not affected in any way. In addition, Mr O'Connor's scoring of the bout was considered and whilst judging a contest is subjective. <laughs> uh, well, we'll get on to that because, you know, and following Mr O'Connor's explanation of how he scored the bout, the stewards are satisfied that Mr O'Connor's final score reflected his own opinion of the contest. So they totally backed O'Connor up. Yeah. Uh, why? So, why can't we, the public, hear Terry O'Connor's explanation about the phone he were looking at, why he were looking at, and how he came to them scorecards? And plus, we're in a sport here, boxing, where it's a very controversial scorecard, the most controversial in the last ten year. People are saying in the UK. So, if it's that controversial. And it's a phone he's looking at during the fight. Why aren't? Why isn't there a criminal investigation? Because people have bets on the fight. Yeah, ex ex exactly. And furthermore, I'd add to that, Russ. Why is O'Connor being called up, up the big boys up Cardiff when any any other referee where they're not happy with anything you say or do? And half the time, you don't have to do anything wrong. They just take a dislike to you. The area council, you have to go before them on a Sunday. They meet once morning. or twice a month, and a Sunday morning. Even if you've got something else on, like I used to, I used to have stuff on us. So I used to have to appear before them when they were messing me about. So why isn't that now? This business, they're saying it's not a phone. It's irrelevant whether he's got a phone or not. The point is, if it's true, he's been caught doing stuff when he should be judging the fight. He should be judging that fight. You know, it's as simple as that. Trouble you've got here, area councils, unelected. You see, like I said to you last time, you see, one or two nice people on there there is, but they've not got any power. Yeah. You see, years ago, going back to who we both know, Howard Foster, I like Howard. You know, he, he was very good to me when I was with the board. But you see, Howard was a representative years ago, you see. So he, he'd go and to feedback what was said and done. They stopped all that. So they're a totally secret. They're more secret than the Masons. So, so they, they've got your future. The Freemasons or the Bean Masons. Well, they, yeah, exactly. You know, and, and this is another thing. I've got to totally concur with you. I'm not just saying it, Russ, because you're here. I've, I, I mean, I've watched this Bean, as you call him, and um, the other one, Gareth A. Dave. I am sick of everyone telling me, oh, I know Robert Smith, how wonderful and brilliant a job. What, what good are they doing? What have they actually changed for the betterment? All that list of stuff I've given you. Still in COVID, the referees aren't allowed to wear gloves. Pathetic, you see. And I, we could go on and on. But the area councils, unelected. The whole lot of them, you know, they're meeting secret. They won't tell you anything. I, I wouldn't... Um, when they, they you see, they call you up by letter, Russ, you see, and our ones got called up. And so I phoned up Martin Flurry, who's one of the big boys at Cardiff. He's on the Midlands. Yeah. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, you're brilliant, Gareth. You're this, that, blah, blah, blah. 
He said, don't tell anyone you've spoke to me. Next week at a show, Richard Vaughan, that I idiot, pulled me aside and told me, you're not allowed to, to phone anyone on the council. So you can't speak to people who are supposed to be your friends. This, we're all supposed to be a team. And that's how they operate. And the same thing happened to Rob Chalmers. Good lad, good referee. He's, he's resigned years ago. No longer Another one no longer with the boxing board of control. He sent an email to Flory and he, 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 he said, keep it quiet. And it, and it got back. It, it was reported that he'd sent an email yeah, about his case. You know. Right, so well, let me just point something out here, right? You mentioned Adam Smith, a.k.a. Bean. We call him Bean. Yeah. He looks like Mr. Bean, doesn't he? Yeah. Right. He said Adam Smith says boxing's full of characters. Well, I like to think I'm a character, and I'm giving him the name Bean. But he also, he's at the top. He also annoys me because Adam Smith's at the top here at Sky. Sky have got an exclusive deal with Matchroom. Adam Smith's a commentator, head commentator, lead commentator. So he's got a... A, what do they call? What, what what would you call it? A duty, not a duty of care. He's got a vested interest for the matchroom fighters to be bigged up on a show, hasn't he? Conflict of interest. Yeah, conflict of in conflict of interest on a massive scale. But it starts from the top. This so we've got Robert Smith, right? He's not going to come out and explain it. They're all he, he's looking after Terry O'Connor because that's they're all one little click, aren't we? And then yeah. you've got Adam Smith. He's not going to come out and pull people up, like Macklin, for being biased, Tony yeah. Bellew for tweeting constant rubbish and rimming matching fighters, and Johnny Nelson. Now, these people are now a cult. It's a cult, but it starts from the top, and it goes down. And it sends a message, the wrong message to everybody else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I think that boxing doesn't help itself because you've got Robert Smith there and Terry O'Connor. That'll be blown away in another month. Everybody will have forgot about it. Adam's yeah. been doing this for years. He talks constantly on the shows when he's commentating and it's annoying because we don't want to hear about what a fighter has for breakfast in the morning. You go and put a Muhammad Ali fight on with George Foreman. Go and put that on TV. The commentators don't talk like Adam Smith. Constantly yeah. in your ear all. I mean, how can Macklin or people like Carl Froch concentrate when they've got Bean constantly going on and on? And then you've got him doing interviews after interview after interview constantly on YouTube channels. Would the head of Channel 5 Boxing be doing interview after interview after interview on, yeah. on YouTube? No, they wouldn't. Would the head of BT Sport... We're doing interview after interview after interview. No, would they be commentating on shows? No, they wouldn't. So Adam Smith's a conflict of interest. Years and years and years ago, let me tell you this, and I know you're watching, Bean. Chris Brown were head of Sky. You won't remember this. Chris Brown were head of Sky. And he wanted rid of Adam Smith for the simple reason that Adam Smith were getting too close to fighters, especially up at the Ingle Gym. He were going to Naz's house another fighter's yeah. house, and he was doing it all the time. He said, look, that's not your job, Adam. When you go out in that Sky Sports van to interview people, go to the gym, interview them, and you come back to base, headquarters. But he started getting, building personal relationships with fighters, and Chris Brown had had enough. We all know what happened, don't we? Adam Smith tried to jump ship at Satanta. We're ringing Dennis constantly. Can you get me on at Satanta? I think they're trying to get rid of me here. But Adam Smith had yeah. an ace up his sleeve, just like they got rid of Andy Gray and Richard Keyes. Adam Smith got rid of Chris Brown. I'm not going to go into it because I've only heard half at tail, but Adam Smith is the Grim Reaper. If he wants you gone, you're gone. He got rid of Chris Brown, right? I'm not going to go into detail. A lot of people know why he got rid of him. And he got himself into a position of power. But he's annoying me, Adam Smith. He annoys a lot of people. He's a very, very good commentator, but he doesn't shut his pie hole, does he? Yeah. <clears throat> he should be quiet now. They've made a big thing this last week. Macklin and Adam Smith have been doing interview after interview after interview, <coughs> ramming it home that they weren't biased at the weekend. Heaven forbid they should pick the wrong guy that won. Vasquez won, and they picked Vasquez. Fair enough. 
But that's your job to do that. You commentators. Yeah. Macklin's running an unofficial scorecard on the screen. And Adam Smith, they're there to say who they think is one, but they're not the judges, but they have to not be biased. Now, they keep going on about, ah, oh, Ritson's a matchroom fighter, and, and we didn't pick Ritson to win. Ritson is not a matchroom fighter. He's an MTK fighter. He's yeah. not a matchroom fighter. He does not have a matchroom deal. So why did they keep saying, well, Ritson's a matchroom fighter. We picked Vasquez. We're not biased. No, but you've been biased for a long time, haven't you? Many, many years. And since I've created this shitstorm on them, they're all coming out, and now they're known as the unbiased. It's like a pop group, <laughs> isn't it? We're the unbiased. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so we've got them on the run. We're only a small channel, and people who follow me, the proper hardcore boxing fans, but yeah. they all want a fair sport. We want it done right. Yeah. Like this weekend, you've got Martin. Sorry, today, sorry. Well, it's weekend. Martin Murray against uh, Billy Joe Saunders. Now, that's not a bad fight because they're both in, being inactive, but it shouldn't be for a world title, should it? The belt shouldn't be on the line. But yeah. the WBO, they're going to get the noses in the chop and get the sanctioning fees. But it shouldn't be a world title fight. That Martin Murray's in his 39th year. And he, he doesn't deserve a world title shot. I'm pleased he's getting a payday, but the belt doesn't need to be on the line. But the WBO, they're not bothered. They're just like all oh, the rest of them. You heard Mayweather's in, you know, on IFL the other day, didn't you? So it's rotten to the core and nobody's doing a thing about it. It starts from the top from Robert Smith down to the referees. They don't have to answer yeah. to anybody. Then you've got Adam yeah. Smith. They're bigging up Matchroom and Robert Smith and everybody that... It's a cesspit. It's becoming yeah. a cesspit and nobody's doing anything about it. That's right. Everybody knows what's going on, but they're turning a blind eye. It's a fucking joke. Yeah, it is. It is. But Conor needs to come out and explain himself in public. We want to see a statement from O'Connor. You're on your phone in the middle of a title fight. Why is that? Who's texting you or who are you texting? What are you looking at? What is going on? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's such a bad scorecard that the police should be looking at O'Connor's phone. It's that bad. And another thing, Michael Alexander got off lightly. His card was shocking as well. Just because he didn't get caught on a phone, he's been... He's, everybody's not mentioned his name, but Michael Alexander should have to explain his scorecard as well. Never mind Terry O'Connor. You know what I mean? And Marcus McDonald, they all should be up there and explain. Well, how, how were the nine rounds apart? It's a 12-round fucking fight. The nine rounds apart. What the fuck are they looking at? Yeah. I learned that we're fucking also awesome, now, then. <laughs> <laughs> we're also doing that. So get me back on that carpet. Get me back to normality because this it's shit and it's starting to do me head in now. It's really yeah. starting to fucking annoy me. It's in front of our eyeballs. They're not even doing it sneakily. It's like they're in middle of fight like that with like that with phone. <laughs> Look at that phone in the middle of the fight. They're not even glancing at it. They're fucking holding the phone. But you see, the ice stars are untouchable, I'll Russ. Video now for swearing. Go on, you. <laughs> you saying. The ice stars are untouchable. Every other, every other class of referee with the border control gets reports written on on the refereeing on every single fight. And as I brought that up last time, that's a joke because the people writing the reports have, have generally never done the job, but they won't show you the reports. That's Robert Smith. He won't, there's another thing he's done nothing about, like I said before. But you see, the A stars, nobody writes reports on them. They're untouchable. Same here. If that had been a, a referee that wasn't an A star, he'd have been called up before the area council. But O'Connor, oh no, he's too big for that. He's too important. So he can go to Cardiff. You see, why, why do they have these meetings, like you say? Why does each area have these meetings? Some of these area councils are causing absolute chaos. They're, they're, they're ruining me. They're ruining Jeff Hines' career. But why have we got no representatives on the council? Why can't we know what's been said? You're not even allowed to speak to the council reps. 
That's the kind of shoddy, pathetic organisation the border control is. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good, mate. It's not good at all. Nah. Uh, what else did you want to bring up? Yeah. Um, oh, there's, there's, there's so much, as, as I say. Um, I, I would like, if I could, if we could touch, because it's relevant here, because he's actually suing the board. Jeff Hines, if we could, yeah. please. Right, now, I've refereed with Jeff Hines. Um, at the York Hall, I've refereed with him other areas in the Midlands. Oh, he, he's he, well, Franco Sullivan, who a lot of your viewers might not know, but people in amateur boxing know he's, he's in the Boxing Hall of Fame. He's a world class trainer, simple as that. This, but he, like Keith Scott, ex Link Club, another brute, they won't go pro, they don't like the pro game, right? Um, and he said Jeff Hines years ago was a very good referee, and Frank. Is respected very, very well. Like I say, he's in the Hall of Fame now. Jeff Hines is suing the board at the moment because he was told to leave, he could leave a show, he'd done his refereeing. You have a number of referees at most shows. He went and got disciplined over it and he, he gave his explanation and, he, and they accepted it. And then they put on the website that he'd been given words of advice. Oh, Connor's not even been given fucking words of advice. And Jeff just sent three letters to Cardiff saying take that off because it's defaming my character. You know, it's saying he's done something wrong, Russ. Now, this is why he's suing them. But I'll tell you now, Jeff Hines put on Twitter, I'm not on there, but he put on Twitter a while ago that he'd refereed something like 2,000 fights or 1,500 fights. Now, that's all he put, Russ. He didn't say a thing about the board because Jeff knows the score. As soon as you open your mouth about the board, you're finished. He got disciplined over that by the Southern Area Council as well, right? Another time, right? Um... I tell you, Russ, you know, with your experience watching box. Screens froze, Graham. And, and the referee does nothing about it, right? I've seen that. Pro boxers, right? Now, Jeff Hines in London, because like I said to you, he ain't a yes man, he's a proper referee. He actually sorted it out. A boxer got chinned on the floor when he was already down. And he actually, I think he took a point off. He, he saw he did it properly. Behind the scenes, Jimmy Tibbs said to him in front of an area council member, you've done a brilliant job there, Jeff. That was the right thing to do. He got disciplined over that as well. They're persecuting him like they persecute everyone who's not a yes man, Russ. Yeah, it's not good, mate. It's not good. And let's not let, let, let's all remember this. Michael Watson nearly died and it was British Boxing Board of Control's fault that he's disabled now. Yeah, but, what, but that, what they'll happened tell after the fight? What happened after they ran for the hills? They ran for the hills, didn't they? Along with Barry. Exactly. Well, you see, it's you known. Did, Baza. You all ran yeah. out and left Michael Watson. And Frank Warren had to pick the baton up. Am I correct? Oh, oh. Co correct. Frank Warren pulled yeah, them out the board, did he? It's, it, it's, it's well known. I think, you see, the board were in London. Now, why would they, why would they move from London? to North Road, a semi-detached house in Cardiff. What, Michael Watson bankrupted them. And, and it's well known, yeah, Frank, well Frank known Warren bailed them out. But Michael I think it, were in that situation because of the Board of Controls incompetence. And how many they won't change there, are there now? Robert Smith's still there now, isn't he? All of them, Char, Charles Charles, I think he was a butcher. He, he's, Charlie he's, Giles, he's I'm on to you. I'm on to you, yeah. Charlie Giles, you fucking shower of shit. Yeah, They're well, well, look, you. look. You see, in what Mike Watson, as I said to you before, was a high profile um, boxer and obviously he had, a, he had a bit of cash, he could sue them. Bruce Baker, who was a board member, he got, he, he, he got, I think the board bankrupted him, you know, he, um, or he, he sued them. He was with the board, he sued them. John Joe Finnegan, serious brain injury. How many years later, the board yeah, I don't John think have paid him out at all. John Joe Finnegan, let me just, he accepted an offer, though, didn't he? And he, he has had an offer from the board, apparently, I've been told. And, they, and the, the, they're still suing him for something else that they're not happy with or something. So he has had some money out of him, hasn't he? Well, he took... Years and years and years, and he still hadn't had them because he did an article in Boxing News a few years ago about it. Really? So oh, well, that must have come up recently that, that, they've, that they've not told me it's about. It's all but, shrouded in but, mystery, um, but 
it, it's shrouded in mystery, Graham, yeah. the board, in my opinion, because they are shitty shithouses. When they see me at a yeah. show, they look away. When the drug yeah. testers see me, they look away as well because I tell them straight, right? The drug testing people in this country, you can't, is a fucking joke what they do with boxing. Liam Cameron got four year for one charge. Yeah. Tyson Fury had three charges and he got two year ban. What's all that about? But that's another story. Yeah. The boxing board of control yep. are giving people fines out and they've got no power to do that. Anybody who gets a fine from the board, you don't have to fucking pay it. Right? You tell yep. them to fuck off. Tell them straight to fuck off. Sue them. But the problem is they've got all ex barristers on fucking board like that. That other shit house. John Reese, he's a shit house, isn't he? John Reese. Well, I, I, house. I'm I, putting it on you as well. QC, isn't he? Well, he's a QC, but but my, my information a while ago was Russ that he was um, he was forced to resign. Oh, is he gone? Is he like I said? He needs to shit that's out. what I was told. Like like I said the last time, we 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 know what we're doing. Publish who's been done for drink drive in Cardiff. Robert that's Smith got to do. He had a chauffeur, didn't he? There you go. Robert he Smith. Was oh, we're paying for that fucker. Ago. Robert Smith, who we're paying for you to go for the boat for over a year, you shit house. Yep, exactly right. Exactly right. It's it, it, it's it's unreal. And but they just do what they want because they're totally unaccountable. There's no outside agency. There's no HR. There's 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 nothing. They don't, they don't bother me, you know, board. They, said, they put Dennis sent Dennis a letter. Said Dennis, we're, we're pulling plug on your show, suspending your license. You've got to come up in a week on Sunday because of something I'd said on my channel. So Dennis, yeah, yeah. Got, Dennis got lawyers involved and says, well, I ain't done anything. What, what are you on about? It's Russell ain't got, a, I've, I've not got a board license. I can say what I fucking want, cunts. Correct. So so anyway, they, uh, they backed down then once Dennis had lawyers on the job. They shit the pants. But they are shit houses and they were trying to get to Dennis to shut me up. Go on social media, do you know what I mean? We'll shut him up, we'll just have a go at yep. it. Well, it fucking backfired on him, didn't it? Wankers, wankers. Do you know what I mean? But yep. it is what it is. They see me at well, shows. Well, this, this is how I look at it from now on. I I, I don't speak to them at shows. They look the other way. But if they ever bump into me, fucking avoid me. That's what yeah. I say. I'm avoid me. Because I'm liable to just drench you in a drink. Now, that's not assault if you drink too many drinks. If I've got a full pint in my hand, any of them, and that includes referees who I don't like, I will drench them. In fact, all of my followers, if you go to a show and you see Terry O'Connor, I want you to fucking drench him or that Ian John Lewis. Drench them in a fucking drink. Shit houses and Robert Smith, Charlie Giles, bent corrupt cunts, a lot of them. Drench them. Anyway, where were we? Yeah, they're, they're, they're a disgrace. But 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 Russ, touching back on on poor old John Joe Finnegan, right? And I know this for a fact because I, I went round his, I was invited round his house and I went. Yeah. He, he he had been literally years, something like five years. His his mother had sent all the medical documentation. The bloke's half blind. His wife's gone now and took the kids. He's living with with his mom. He can't ever work again. He's he, you know. He was in a bad state, you know. He could have died over that that severe brain injury where he had the, the operation. Now, he, I went round his house after about five years, where since he'd had the uh, the injury, the board slam paid him out, and he got sisters involved because I went round, gave a statement, and um, and gave my my number to to the sisters. So, the, if the board have, have finally done the the right thing, why did it have to take? Literally, so many years and years and years. Michael Watson's uh, took years, though, didn't it? To sort, didn't it? They put him through. Yeah, but you see, the, these weren't these weren't pay the, these weren't paying out, you know. And yeah. and at that show of John Joe's, I wasn't there, but I know the referee who was there, who's since left the board, and he took it was he, he told that sh that shit ass Richard Vaughan, it's dark in here, the lighting's bad, and Richard Vaughan said. Oh, don't worry, we'll get away with it, you know. 
and he's now got a job behind the scenes with Mick Hennessy, and he, he knows about as much about boxing as he does about nuclear physics. Mick knows a lot about Disgrace, boxing. mate. Mick knows Disgrace. Boxing. Mick Hennessy is a good boxing man. Yeah. Great then. All right then. Well, we've uh, we've blown a few cobwebs off, and it's yeah. now uh, what time is it? It's ten past eight, and I've been at it all day long. Just got in, so I'm going to love you and leave you, Graham. It's been yes, nice yes. to speak to you. I hope you and your family are all right, and you have a great weekend. Try not to get too wet up about the British Boxing Board of cunts, because uh, that's what you are, cunts. They are. So, well, as. Well, as, as as I know, an eminent guy calls them, uh, he calls them the British Boxing Board and no control. Yeah, the British Boxing <laughs> Board and no control. There is no control. And it needs a new sanctioning body or governing body to take Correct. over and get rid of these people that have had their noses in the trough, like pigs looking for truffles. Whatever they've had out at job at the moment, consider it severance pay. Take the train and get out of Dodge. Get out of Dodge, exactly. No. Exactly, exactly right. Russ, what sums them up? There was a saying years ago that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Lord Acton. And that's, you can put that straight at the board. All right then. Well, listen, you take care and all the best, Graham. Cheers. All the best, Russ. Thanks again, mate. Cheers, mate. mate. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. Well, that was uh, Graham Morris from Midlands. Uh, nice to speak to him and to uh, have a chat about the Terry O'Connor not guilty. It's like drug dealers getting uh, having to go and answer to Pablo Escobar, isn't it, for dealing drugs in uh, wherever Pablo Escobar's from, Colombia, is it? It's like one of his lieutenants getting caught deal dealing kilos of coke and having to go up in front of Pablo. Pablo judge there. What's going on here? Oh, he's been caught, Pablo, with a kilo of uh, beak. Oh, is it? All right, well, carry on. It's a bit like that, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Uh, so it's not good, but it is what it isn't. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Don't have nightmares, Robert Smith, you shit house. <laughs>